Welcome to Food for Thought, the place to explore, celebrate, and manifest a life motivated and defined by unconditional compassion and optimal wellness. Today's episode is Zero Waste Inspiration, What to Do About Catalogs, Junk Mail, and Envelopes with Plastic Windows. Before we begin, my name is Colleen patrick Adro. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com and on social media. Want to make sure you know about Clubhouse. I am there every day hosting rooms and conversations and connections, and I hope you can join me. You can find my books wherever books are sold, and you can join me in my online cooking classes or in my vegan trips around the world. Uh, we go to Europe, we go to Africa, we go to Asia, and we're working on one for North America. Go to cpgtrips.com for details. This podcast, Food for Thought, is possible because of the support of listeners like you. As you know, there are no sponsors or ads on Food for Thought, and with your help, I can keep doing this podcast. Without your help, it can't happen. So if it's something you value, please join other supporters by going to patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau. You can also go to joyfulvegan.com and find the link there. Become a supporter today at your chosen level. One of the perks, and you'll see it in, the, in, in several of the levels, is a discount to my virtual cooking classes. So be sure to check your Patreon account for coupon codes. If you don't know where they are, they're there in your Patreon account. So thanks everyone for supporting this podcast, for subscribing to Food for Thought, and for listening. So people often ask me what is one of the biggest culprits hindering the zero part of my zero waste journey. And I have to say, without having to give it much thought, that one of those things is mail. Junk mail, flyers, catalogs, credit card offers, charity solicitations, and just mail in general. In another episode, we're going to talk about packaging and shipping from online shopping, but today we're talking about good old-fashioned mail. Now, I'm not opposed to receiving things in the mail, provided I've chosen to receive them. But with our names and our mailing addresses and even our email addresses, obviously, being among the most valuable commodities for businesses and organizations, both for-profit businesses and nonprofit organizations, they're bought and sold without our really knowing it most of the time, and in many cases without us giving our permission, or at least not knowing that we're giving our permission. Most of us don't read the fine print when we sign up for something, or when we buy something, or when we order something online. The fine print is usually that we're giving our email address, or we're giving our permission to mail us um, more information. Luckily, there are consumer groups making sure we can control uh, who gets our information and making sure we can remove ourselves from lists to cauterize the flow of physical mail into our mailboxes, especially junk mail. Now, the information and resources I'm going to be providing here in this episode, they're primarily about the United States. But I think it's safe to say that all of it can be extrapolated to other countries as well, especially when we're talking about junk mail. I will be providing resources for the U.S. and for the U.K. as well. But if you're listening in other countries, I think it will give you a sense of who to contact uh, and what to search for wherever you live. So this junk mail we're talking about, all of this mail, it's not innocuous. You know, I think because we think it's paper, we can just recycle it and it's no big deal. Uh, it's the way people think about, I think, fruit scraps or vegetable scraps that, well, if it's a banana, that's, uh, you know, the peel is compostable. So what's the big deal if we just throw it away? The big deal is, first of all, we're producing things that we're just throwing away. So that's a problem. And the other issue is that if you don't have the right conditions for composting, for things breaking down, into compost, then it's quite literally just producing methane and other greenhouse gases uh, in, in landfills, and it's problematic. So when it comes to mail, uh, according to the uh, annual statistical fact book of the Data and Marketing Association, which no, I don't I'm subscribe to this, but I did do research for this. Uh, and according to them, direct mail marketing in the US is a $10 billion industry, and it results in an astounding 76 seven plus billion 
pieces of junk mail per year. According to the Sierra Club, like, what does that mean? According to the Sierra Club, 100 million trees are used to make junk mail. So not innocuous. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA in the US, um, 60% of that junk mail is trashed and landfilled and not recycled. So we're talking about a lot of wasted resources for nothing, for naught. Now, remember my definition of waste. My definition of waste is any item for which its owner has stopped taking responsibility Thus, my definition of zero waste is about valuing what we have, only bringing things into our lives we can value, and taking responsibility for the things we cannot value or or, or don't value, just taking responsibility for the things in our lives. Now, one of the ways to do that is to prevent unnecessary things from coming into our lives in the first place, namely things you can't take responsibility for and things you won't value. And this is why junk mail is particularly frustrating and annoying because I haven't chosen it. I didn't bring it into my life. I didn't opt in. I did not want it. (laughs) And yet it's incumbent upon me to try and deal with it responsibly, to stop the flow and to avoid receiving this junk in the first place. And that takes time and it takes energy. You know, everything we talk about when we talk about zero waste or taking responsibility and uh, assuming ownership over things, it it does take time. It would be so much easier for me to throw this stuff away. I have things I'm giving away on Free Cycle. If you don't know what Free Cycle is, it's a place where you just post. It's like a neighborhood group and it's local and you post things that you are just giving away. And you can even put things, you put a wanted post if you are looking for something and you can scan through. People are doing it on Craigslist. They're doing it in all these places. It takes me time to take the photo of the thing I'm giving away. It takes me time to post it. It takes me time to answer people's emails. It takes me time to put the thing outside, them texting me, telling me they picked it up. I mean, this stuff takes time, but it's my responsibility. And so even as um, it relates to junk mail and mail and catalogs and these kinds of things, even though I didn't opt in, I probably did at some point, to be honest, right? <laughs> I mean, like if I, you know, in some ways, if I gave my name to a company because I bought something for them, you know, I'm opting in. But companies are getting just better, or I should say consumer groups have made it such that, con- that businesses have to honor the fact that we don't want this stuff. And so we need to um, proactively opt out before they opt us in. So I'm not saying it's all of our responsibility, but you know, in the end, it's mine. I'm not just going to throw these things away in the garbage to send a landfill. And the more time you take to do these things, the things I'm about to talk about, I promise you, it does get better. It just takes time. So (laughs) of all the things that are the most complicated and the thing that's hindering the zero waste aspect of zero waste, even though we know there's no such thing as zero, um, it's mail. Now, I'm not opposed to receiving mail, as I said, or sending mail because, you know, like I said, if I want to receive it, you know, or send it, then I'm, I've got, you know, I, I'm exercising my desire to do that. It's not just a passive experience. So sending out a physical birthday card to a friend or a physical thank you card. I love sending physical cards to friends. I mean, I don't do it like every day, but it's just really... I find very meaningful. Uh, It's really lovely to sit down and take the time to write out a card versus an email or a text or write a letter to someone. It feels meaningful for me when I've received these things. And, uh, and I just, I just, it's, it's meaningful. So it's not to say that, you know, we should never ever send anything in the mail. It's about making sure we're getting what we want and sending only what we think someone else would want. Again, it's about value. Now, I will talk about how I take responsibility for a card I receive or any mail I receive. We will be talking about that. But I'm also mindful when it comes to sending physical cards. So I have many blank cards, holiday cards, thank you notes, uh, personalized stationery that I've accumulated over the years that I'm now using. Remember, zero waste is about valuing what you have. And one of the ways to value something is to use it for the purpose for which it was made, right? So if I have thank you notes just sitting in a drawer, you know, blank ones, and I'm not using them, I'm not valuing them. So by using them, by sending them to friends and families and neighbors, I'm valuing them. 
and I create some joy and I deepen some relationships and I demonstrate some gratitude in the meantime. I mean, what else would you do with all of those cards just sitting in your drawer? <laughs> like, Use them, right? So that's a part of this is, is I love that idea of ownership and, and, and use value. Now, while I think there are probably some glossy cards in my stock, most of what I have is made of recycled paper, just because when I buy cards, I tend to look for that. One thing I will say about cards these days, especially if you're looking for just a single card for a friend, if you go into a store and there's, you know, one of those little turnstiles of of cards. Every card I see now is in plastic, like in a little plastic sleeve. It never used to be like that. And I don't mean like every card, you know, sometimes pharmacies still have cards in this, you know, on the wall, and they're all in their little, you know, slots, and there's, you know, 20 of the same card. But I keep seeing these turnstiles that have cards with plastic sleeves, and I will not buy them. It won't do it and you can't make me. So so the idea is to also make sure we're buying, if you know, if we're getting new ones, getting recycled as we can or cardstock, that kind of thing. Things that you can actually compost or recycle once you're done with it or once someone else is done with it. And so that's one thing I'm mindful of. But, um, and I see this a lot during the holidays because of course we get a lot of photo cards from people. Now there are more and more companies printing photos on recycled paper. So they're not glossy paper, it's more matte and it's uh, it's cardstock. Uh, and I do confess, I get overwhelmed by all the glossy photos I get at the holidays because we you cannot recycle them. There's plastic on them. That's the glossy part. And so just consider that for future holiday cards, buying recycled paper as, and you know, obviously you can do online cards, but people still want to receive cards. That's fine. But just be mindful that if it's plastic, you can't recycle it. And, you know, we can't, we just, it's just going to sit in a landfill. Now, how do we go about limiting unwanted mail coming into our mailbox? This is what we're talk, talking about today. Let's take it one category at a time. I'm going to be providing the exact links to what I talk about here to Patreon supporters. So if you want the transcripts for episodes, remember to become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com. It's a perk I give to you value for value. I produce this content. I do the research. I create these resources. I try and whittle it down in a way that makes sense and is really accessible for you. You say, I value that you support this podcast, I, you know, thank you by giving you some perks. So one of the perks for uh, Patreon supporters at different levels is giving you the transcripts to these episodes. So if you want these, and if you want to value this podcast, please become a supporter. So let's start with the category that is becoming archaic, but where fossils still remain. And that's telephone books and yellow pages, those big, thick, books that we just get on our driveway or in our mailboxes. You can opt out of telephone books and yellow pages by going to yellowpagesoptout.com. <laughs> so, so remember that or write that down. Or if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get this link from me, yellowpagesoptout.com. But what do you do with those big, thick phone books and those yellow pages? You might have received before you've opted out or it takes time, you know, for them to, you know, for them to opt you out. What to do? Number one, if curbside recycling is offered in your community, you will likely be able to recycle those directories. You can put them right in your curbside bin. So I should actually have said that was the last option because I wouldn't make that your first option. My first option would be suggesting something like all that paper inside that phone book so not the covers not the back cover and the front cover but all that paper inside use it as a fire starter if you still have a wood burning fireplace instead of newspaper to start the fire use that paper inside now you're actually using it rather than just putting it in the recycling bin and the only thing you'd put in the recycling part uh, bin is the back cover cover and the front cover so really good way to start Fires, you just roll up those pages just like you would newspaper and they're fire starters. The second thing you can do is mulch, use it as mulch. I talked in my podcast episode on composting that I have a shredder specifically to shred cardboard and paper that I then add to my composters. You can also add it to the city's compost bin. Uh, but you can do something like that with the phone book pages. You can shred those papers or you can just put it directly directly 
the papers in your garden, shredded or not. And you would just tear out the pages. You would lay them down about six pages thick in a flower bed under a thin layer of normal mulch. And it acts as a shield to prevent weeds and grass from coming through the flower bed. And the paper is biodegradable. Now, the pages do contain ink, obviously. So it's best to use this one for decorative uh, gardens rather than your vegetable garden. But you're absolutely fine putting that in your garden. So that's another idea. I don't know if you've heard this. Uh, one more idea is um, to use those pa the pages uh, to clean windows. So I I I've done this and it's actually quite true. Newspaper is a really good material to use when you're cleaning windows. It They don't add streaks with the newspaper. So you can do the same thing with the pages of phone books. So use them as a cleaning material as opposed to paper towels, as opposed to even a reusable rag, you know, cotton rag. I have found that the, uh, the newspaper works and it would be the same thing with the pages of phone books. So there are some ways to value, to use those books as opposed to just throwing them in the recycling bin. If you don't opt in for those, um, ideas, then just put the, the, uh, big books in the recycling bin, but call uh, Yellow Pages Opt Out at, or go to yellowpagesoptout.com. You can find a phone number and you can also do it online. Okay. So that's phone books. The second category, which feels archaic also, but still a reality, are those Valpac savings coupons, right? Those, those packets of coupons, they usually come in an envelope and they usually come in an envelope with a plastic window. Now, to remove yourself from the list, you can go to valpack.com. This is pack without a C, so V-A-L-P-A-K.com. And then you can go specifically to the section that's coupons, and you can enter your uh, name and email, uh, your name and uh, physical address, your mailing address. There's also a telephone number. I'm not going to give it here. You're not going to remember the telephone number. But if you go to valpack.com, uh, you, you can remove yourself from the list. You might want to have the mailing label handy because you can put your information in exactly as it's printed because that might make a difference in terms of you getting your name removed. Now, if you like coupons, but you don't want to receive all of the mail, you can go to valpack.com and you can also choose to print coupons by geographical location. So that's another option, valpack. Dot com. Now, moving on to credit card offers, if you have ever filled out a product warranty card, I do, I have, uh, if you've ever purchased a new home or vehicle, if you've ever supplied your credit information to a lending institution, or if you've ever simply carried a credit card, you can be sure your name and address are being circulated among an array of credit card companies hungry for your business. So you'll have the opportunity with this next option, to choose either a five-year removal or a permanent removal. Some people want to get solicitations because they want to know what's out there. I don't. Um, so you can choose whether it's five-year or permanent. So for personal credit cards, um, you can ask the company to place you on their in-house list that's not sold or traded to other companies. So that's another option. Talk to your credit card company. But you would go to opt out prescreen. Dot com. Again, there's a telephone number. I'll give you this number. It's kind of easy to remember. 888-5-OPT-OUT. Mm, might remember that. 888-5-OPT-OUT. But you could also just go to optoutprescreen.com for more information. If you do choose the five years and you you know, you change your mind after five years, maybe put it on your calendar five years from the day you opt out and uh, you might have to do it again. Now, I had to do this for my mother as well since I became her legal uh, address when I was her power of attorney before she died and her mail was coming to my address. So you can do this also for, um, for the deceased and I will actually give you some more information about that as well. So you've got the credit card companies who are sending you solicitations and you can opt out of their... Uh, on their of their list. Then there's also the credit bureaus. Uh, credit bureaus, um, they may sell names and addresses to banks and credit card companies. That's partly how your name got to those credit card companies. So now you can contact Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Uh, there is a, um, a fourth one as well in Inovis. You can do that uh, by going to, it's the same opt-out. So you can go to the same phone number and opt-out prescreen.com as well. And that's 888-5-OPT-OUT. <laughs> so I feel so silly giving an 800 number um, on my podcast. But there you go. For those who still make phone calls, make a phone call. It feels old school. 
kind of feels a little nostalgic to do so. So um, you can do that. So when you're over at optoutprescreen.com, make sure you're opting out of the credit bureaus as well. Now, bills and magazines. Highly recommend switching all of your bills to electronic paperless delivery. I think that's such an obvious thing to say, but I'm just going to say it. Maybe you just haven't gotten around to it. I have found it to be very easy. You go to all of your bills and all of the companies you do business with, um, you know, utility companies or whatever it is, go um, and ask them all, and you'll have to do this one at a time, and and ask them for paperless. Most of them have it. I even see on those companies' envelopes – on the envelope, it usually says, you know, go paperless. So you can absolutely uh, do that very easily. And it would just require you, you know, going to your your gas and electric, your water, your waste management, whatever it is. So when it comes to magazines, I know it, 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 there might be magazines you want to keep, and that is absolutely fine. That, that's something I also struggle with because there's sometimes just I want to get away from my electronic devices and just be in front of a physical you know, book or magazine. So I get that. There might be magazines you want to keep. And that's fine. But you can also get digital subscriptions to most magazines these days, and you can read them on the app on your, you know, iPad or your Android tablet or et cetera. Uh, There's lots of devices these days. So you would go to the magazine's website, you know, enter your subscription information and opt in to um, to change your subscription to digital. So that's an option as well. Uh, I will say (laughs) there's this really frustrating experience David and I had recently. So um, we have... um, some uh, credit card, a couple Amex cards. Amex, we love Amex cards for their benefits, um, specifically their travel benefits for our points because you know all of the travel we do or used to do and will do again, we use for uh, we use our points for all of that so we've quite gotten into travel hacking and that's really a matter of getting the credit cards that have the best value <laughs> again uh, return for the money you spend getting credit card points for travel is just the best way to spend those points so we have a couple mx cards and they automatically send their customers this magazine called Departures Magazine. And it's this glossy, high-end, you know, travel and and luxury uh, home magazine. And we're like, we don't need this at all. It is, we are the wrong <laughs> audience for this. We just don't, we, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So we're the wrong audience. But I also just don't want this glossy magazine. And he gets uh, the his copy. I get my copy. But there are like two magazines in the plastic wrapped packaging and we have to call separately to get off the mailing list even though you know we still get the Amex cards but we don't want the magazine it has been over a year and we cannot get off the list so we you know they always say wait four to six weeks or eight weeks or whatever to get you know to before it kicks in before you think it didn't work but no more than that went by and I had to call again they're like oh yeah that didn't go through last time let's try it again Finally, David said to me the other day, he's like, the best news ever, Departures Magazine is moving to digital completely 100%. So we will not be getting this magazine or these magazines anymore. But oh my God, here's an example of I'm just trying to get off this stupid list and I can't even calculate how much time I have spent, you know, just trying to get off the stupid mailing list for this magazine. So I'm really glad they are moving digital. Maybe I'll read it when it's digital. I don't know, but I certainly don't want it physical. Uh, So uh, also go to your bank's website, uh, do the same thing as you would do with all your utility companies and get on paperless. Uh, Same thing with all of any investments you have, you know, sometimes they will send you, you know, kind of the stock information. Just get it all digital. So much easier. And that's where you can also change your bank's privacy preferences, by the way. Um, Most banks by default will share your information with other financial institutions, which will send you a lot of junk mail. So you're just on this constant wheel of frustration. So make sure you change your privacy settings so that you don't, so that your information isn't sold. Opt out of any information sharing and marketing communications, and you will hopefully get less of that in the future. Now, moving on to the different types of mail, I'm certainly, you know, I don't work for the post office and trying to understand the different types of mail. This is for the USPS, the United States Postal Service. Obviously, some of it would also apply to the Royal Mail in the UK. 
But um, mail typically that we get, you know, that's like the mail that's used to ship letters and thick envelopes and padded envelopes and lightweight packages would be first class mail. Second class mail is like magazines, newspapers uh, that are printed more than four times a year. So that's second class. And then third class is marketing mail and flyers and mailers, that kind of thing. First class mail is what is usually legit, you know, kind of mail. But there are so many ways that marketing companies are, you know, kind of changing the way th their marketing materials look so that you think it's first class mail and then you open it up and before you know it, you've opened up this junk mail and it's, and it's not easy to return it. And I'll talk about returning it. So, well, I'll talk about it now. <laughs> so the best tip I can give you, at least for those who live in the United States, is do not open unwanted first and second class mail. Their postage includes return service. So you can write return to sender or just refused on the front of the envelope. And then you can write on the back of the envelope, take me off your mailing list. And I keep a pen in my mailbox for that effect, like to do that easily because... I mean, especially I live 100 steps away from my mailbox. I mean, I'm literally up on a hill. And so I, you know, I don't want to have to go upstairs <laughs> to get a pen. Um, you know, and that's where my postal carrier will be, my mail carrier will be. And I want to be able to just hand it to her. So, so keep a pen in your mailbox or near your mailbox or on your person or what have you and write return to sender or refused on the front of the envelope. And it will be returned back to that company. Now, I said, hand it to your mail carrier. You can also put it in a USPS mail collection box. You know, and again, in the US, it's one of those, um, you know, blue uh, mailboxes in the UK. If that applies, obviously, that would be one of those, um, you know, for, for boxes for the Royal Mail. Now, so so do that. Okay, you might, and so put it, so either hand it to your mail carrier or put it in one of those blue boxes. I think you can also put it in your, your, your own mailbox and put the flag up so that they know that there is mail that they're taking back from you, but don't open it. Because if you open it, then you can't just hit, ref, you can't just hit refused. I'm thinking I'm online. You can't just write refused. You would actually have to put it in a different envelope and put postage on it and send it back. So don't open it. But it's just so tricky because these companies are trying to, you know, get us to open it. And it's so tricky. Now, sometimes you're also going to want to write refused on the front of the envelope or return to sender if there's uh, someone who used to live in your house and their name is coming to your address. Um, do the same thing, but also put in not at this address on the envelope. Sometimes it's just N-A-T-A, -A, but put not at this address and uh, and return to sender or, uh, or refuse. Now, when, like I said, when, when, it, when it comes to you and it's not clear that when you look at the outside of the envelope that it's junk mail, like because they're being so tricky, one way you can determine that it is junk mail or that it is marketing mail is that you just look at the, where the stamp would be. Right. So if uh, junk mail is usually sent at the marketing mail rate, which used to be called standard rate. So sometimes you'll see standard rate. Sometimes you'll see pre-sorted standard. Sometimes you'll see an abbreviation for that, like PRSRT and then STD, pre-sorted standard. Sometimes you see pre-sorted marketing. Uh, sometimes you see the abbreviation for that. So look where the stamp is to see if it says standard or pre-sorted standard. That will tell you it's junk mail. Now, if it's a company you've done business with in the past, they may be using that pre-sorted standard rate. Um, and while it's technically junk, you might just do them the courtesy of emailing them or calling them to ask if they could please remove you from their list. That should do the trick, but it might take persistence on your part. But give that a try. Okay, uh, catalogs is another category. God, so many catalogs. So you can remove your name from mailing lists by going to, for catalogs by going to dmachoice.org. D as in dog, M as in mom, A choice.org. It can take up to 90 days for the flow to stop since many mailings are already in print or production. And I believe DMA Choice caters to people outside of the US, so check that out. Now, there is now a small fee of $2 to unsubscribe through DMA. 
um, it's Data and Marketing Association. Um, but it's, I mean, I, I'm willing to spend the $2 to do this, whatever, it's super annoying, obviously. So after registering an account at dmachoice.org, paying the $2 fee, you can unsubscribe from different categories of mail, like catalogs and advertisements, or you can unsubscribe from um, specific catalogs you don't want. You can do this for 10 years. Now, again, mark your calendar because 10 years goes by faster than you think. Now, one of those sections that I found really helpful, or there's two sections you might be surprised by. Well, okay, I'll say all the sections. There's different sections. So there's, um, you know, unsolicited commercial mail, but you can also do email. You can, for unsolicited commercial mail, email, you can also do telephone um, to receive um, like fewer national com commercial calls. Now, um, you can also use the national do not call registry, but some states like Pennsylvania and Wyoming, it, you can do you can get off the list through dmachoice.org. There's also a category for a deceased do not contact list, which I did for my mother when she died, or I did when my mother died, um, which was super, super helpful because I was getting her um, mail. But also it's, you know, if her name is still in circulation, that won't stop until I did what I did, which is um, get her off the list. And you can also do this if you are a caregiver for someone. You can register their name um, because you're the caregiver. So that's super helpful as well. So catalogchoice.org is also, it's a free alternative, but it only allows you to unsubscribe from catalogs one at a time. You can't remove yourself from entire lists. So I would just go to dmachoice.org and I would also go to catalogchoice.org just as an, an extra. Now, this won't unsubscribe you from catalogs from businesses that you've been a customer of, uh, only ones where you're a prospect. If you have actually purchased a product from a company, you will have to go to their website, unsubscribe from their catalog manually through customer service, probably have to call them. Another category, a lot of my mail used to be from charities. I'm sure you experience this as well. Um, charities I've donated to or charities who've sold my name. Uh, I still get some, some of which are coming to my mother, some of which are coming from organizations who bought my name. It's just a variety. So I do take the time to call. I have to go to their website, find their contact information. I will either call or I will send an email. Now, I actually have a pre-written email, a sample email that I use. So I just copy and paste and then just change the name of the organization because I want them to know I care about them. I mean, this is especially of organizations I've donated to. So I think it's worth taking just a few more, well, it doesn't even take a few more minutes because I'm copying and pasting this kind of template that I created. And it just says, I really support you. I love your work. I don't want to stop hearing from you, but I don't want physical mail. So please keep, you know, keep me on your mailing list with, with my email address, but I don't want physical mail. I will, you know, I will be more likely to support you if um, if I'm hearing from you through email and not through uh, physical mail. And I have gotten off of all of those lists. So that has really lightened up the amount of mail that I get. So so yeah, so it does take time to call, but it's it's worth it. Um, one little thing I've done too, I don't know if this is something that would be helpful for you, but there is something, there's a service through USPS, United States Postal Service, which is called Informed uh, Delivery informed delivery. And I really love it. So you sign up at usps.com in like a second. And then every day you get, you can digitally preview your mail and manage your packages that are scheduled to arrive. So it basically gives you grayscale images, like via email of the exterior address side of letter sized mail pieces. And it also gives you the tracking information for packages. You, you don't get a photo of that. You don't get a grayscale image of the package, but you do get a grayscale image of the exterior address side of the letter sized mail pieces like they like what the envelope looks like it's a picture of it and then you get the tracking information if you're receiving packages I find it to be super helpful first of all it provides some um, protection in the sense that um, the images are scanned before they go into your mailbox so if you saw it scanned and then it's not in your actual mailbox it's possible it was stolen and you have proof that it was delivered because you have an image of it also the reason I like it is because sometimes days go by and and I don't leave my house to go check my mail, which is 100 feet down from my street, as I said. So in light of the fact that I might need to contact a company to ask them to remove me from their list, I can do so before I even get the physical mail piece in my hand. It's an image in my inbox. And with um, a particular person who keeps sending me their um, their mail that um, uh, 
who they've been like persistent and they won't stop I was able to take an image and say please just remove me like here's my address label and I sent it to them via email because I took a screenshot of it so it's just helpful to have this kind of physical uh, this uh this digital image I really like it so that's just one little tip called informed digest I like seeing the mail that um, comes in and then I can kind of list out the ones that I want to remove my my name from so not everything is stopped <laughs> you will still get mailings probably from local businesses and charities you've donated to or other mailings that are not in the above lists everything i just named um you can kind of keep the remaining stragglers and you know still keep trying to call there's also a an app called paper karma which will let you take a photo of the mailing that you have um with your smartphone you take a picture and then they attempt to do the unscribing for uns unsubscribing for you there's a free trial but then after that it's paid but i think it's worth checking out i used them uh for a time and i really liked it so what to do with the junk mail you receive we've already talked about that a little bit recycling would be my second choice my first choice is to try and use the okay well, i would say that recycling would would be my third choice the first choice would be try to use the paper maybe you use it as scrap paper for a while or like I said with the phone books use it for mulching or composting or fire starters or mulch so uh so or clean I'm sorry I said mulch cleaning your windows so try to use what you can uh, the paper could be scrap paper uh, and then uh, my second choice would be compost so I do shred my paper uh, the paper I get I, if I get an envelope that has a plastic window on it obviously I don't shred that too because I don't put plastic in the compost uh, but if there is a plastic window which is super annoying I hate that there's these plastic windows now you can throw them I have done enough research to say that it does appear that most recycling centers will allow the will will include those windows with small amounts of plastic those envelopes I'm sorry with small amounts of plastic the plastic windows to be recycled to go through their recycling machines for the longest time I used to remove the plastic and I still do if I'm actually going to compost uh, or shred that paper envelope but I will take the plastic off and put that actually in the garbage um, because you're not going to recycle that separately but if it's the whole envelope I put in I do put that in the recycling bin I loathe those little plastic windows they actually that they got their patent in 1902 and the material was originally uh rice paper but now of course it is clear plastics and um and as i said most paper mills will kind of filter out anything that's unnecessary like this plastic window but um but i still think it's annoying i hope people are working on trying to get these removed <laughs> because i find them super annoying i mentioned catalogs or at least the ones that don't have glossy paper you can use for the things i mentioned the fire starters etc if they're glossy pages you can't compost them but you can put them in the recycling bin so that's something you can do newspapers same thing use them like you would use uh, mulch for mulch or for composting or cleaning your windows and um, that's my first choice for newspapers but if they're glossy like a magazine they would have to go into the recycling bin now it's always best to check with your local municipality to make sure if an error if an item is accepted in your area um, but there's also um, a resource called earth 911.com you can go to and you can check out like your local government and municipalities or neighborhoods so uh, you can find out more information about that so that <laughs> is what I want to say I know it's so ridiculous that there's so much to consider um, regarding all of this you know we uh, many of you know there was this um, this law that was passed called the China sword law and it meant that China stopped taking all of our waste um, it was a it's a multi-billion dollar industry China was buying our waste but stopped um, not that long ago because oh it turns out it's like super toxic to their workers and to their environment dealing with all of this plastic so recycling is not the answer that's really the last resort we need to prevent it in the first place do what we can to take responsibility for it stop the flow uh, you know reuse repurpose and then recycle that should really be the last resort but I hope some of this was helpful for you this is something all of us contend with wherever we are 
If you'd like more information, please make sure you're following me over at joyfulvegan.com. If you value this podcast, please consider becoming a supporter. There are no ads. There are no sponsorships. It's only you. And I value you immensely. For the animals, this is Colleen Patrick-Gaudreau. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.